Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, December 6th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I am delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, I'm recording this on Wednesday of last week uh, because uh, I had a procedure yesterday, Monday the 5th, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm back to work today, but I didn't want to take any chances. So just in case I'm not back to work today, I'm recording this video so that you have a devotional today. Aren't I sweet? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, hopefully things went well yesterday. We'll see, and you should know by now, I, I plan to update you guys on, on how I'm doing. Uh, you'll get updates from the church office. Um... Yeah, so on Sunday, though, I expect that I have uh, had preached on uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 and following, the story of the announcement from the angel Gabriel to Mary about uh, the child that she's about to bear. Um, and uh, there's a great little bit in there, and I think it's important, uh, an important little nugget that I, I am not going to talk about in my sermon on Sunday, so I will not have talked about from your perspective. And, uh, but I think it's worth talking about. It's a nifty little thing. And this is uh, what it says in Luke 1 it says that the angel Gabriel was dispatched to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. There's two words there that I think are, are um, often misunderstood in our culture. And those are the word virgin and the word betrothed. Um, Virgin, uh, well, virgin, the word virgin uh, can mean in Hebrew and in Greek, can mean an unmarried, a young unmarried woman of marriageable age. It can mean that. Uh, it can also mean a woman who's never engaged in sexual intercourse with a man. Um, and I think both of them are meant here uh, about Mary. But uh, some scholars would say, okay, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that she hasn't had sexual intercourse. So there's not necessarily any uh, divine intervention here in the birth of Jesus. Um, it's not an immaculate conception. Uh, the rest of Luke uh, and Matthew, both of them, uh, rule that possibility out. Uh, Mary is not concerned that she, she when, when the angel makes this announcement, her issue is not that she isn't married. Uh, her issue is that uh, she hasn't had sex. And so that's what she talks to the angel about. Um, so the word virgin there means virgin in every sense of the word, um, but it, it specifically means a young uh, unmarried woman of marriageable age. The second word is the word betrothed. Mary is betrothed to a man named Joseph. And um, it says uh, actually uh, later on that um, Joseph, when he finds out about Mary's pregnancy, being a just man, he resolves to divorce her quietly. Well, what does that mean? Divo How do you divorce? They're not, not married, right? They're betrothed. We think of betrothal as being like our form of engagement, that, that, that he's popped the question uh, and she said yes, but they haven't actually tied the knot, to use a whole bunch of American um, slang, lingo. Um, he has asked her to marry him and she's accepted his invitation, but they haven't yet uh, actually gone through with the marriage ceremony. But that's not what betrothal is in Bible days. Um, in the days of Mary and Joseph, betrothal is much more than an engagement in our American culture in the 21st century. Here in the 21st century, uh, you know, we, we talk to engaged couples and when they're having issues, you know, we try to encourage them through uh, those issues. But we also stress to them that, you know, look, you're not married yet. It's, there's still time. You don't have to go through with it if you're not, if you got cold feet. Um, but in, in the days of Joseph and Mary, it was very different. Um, a betrothal was more than an engagement. It was somewhat less than a marriage, but it was more than an engagement. They have not had the ceremony. They've not come together sexually, but, um, but a betrothal needed to be dissolved through a divorce. It was a, it was a pledge to Mary that was much stronger uh, than what we would consider engagement. In our culture, in American culture in the 21st century, if uh, a man wants to break off the engagement, he just talks to his wife, his, his uh, fiance about it. And, uh, and in many cases, she gives back the engagement ring that they he gave to her. Um, 
when he proposed. Uh, if a woman wants to break off an engagement, she just talks to her uh, her fiance and gives him back the ring if, if such a thing is there, or you know, in some cases keeps the ring. I don't know. Different people do different things, but but it it, it only requires a conversation. Um, and actually, <laughs> in in, ba in in poorly done situations, it requires just a text message to break up uh, an engagement. And that would not be the case for Joseph and Mary. It would it would have required a um, a divorce to dissolve that betrothal. Why do I bring this up? Why is it important? Well, it's important because um, the Bible gives us a lot of instruction about uh, the relationship between husbands and wives. Um, it doesn't talk about the roles of husbands and wives. It doesn't say, you know, husbands have to take out the garbage and wives need to cook the dinner or wives need to balance the checkbook and husbands need to decorate the living room. Um, it doesn't say what the roles of husbands and wives are. Um, it rather talks about the commitment that husbands and wives need to have towards one another and the the, the basis for the marital union, the marital bond. Um, essentially, some principles undergirding marriage, but not how those principles are to be uh, act, lived out in any particular marriage. Um, in my, my parents' marriage, my father and mother believed that in order for my father to be the head of the household, he needed to balance the checkbook. That was something that in their eyes was part of the husband's role. And my father wasn't uh, honestly very good at it. My mother was much better at those things. But because they wanted my father to be the head of the household, he balanced the checkbook and often misbalanced the checkbook. And it was there was often difficulties there. Um, but the Bible doesn't say anything about balancing the checkbook. It doesn't say about the roles of husbands and wives in that regard. Um, the Bible doesn't say that the, that the wife needs to cook all the dinners or even most of the dinners or even any of the dinners. Um, many of those roles that we traditionally assign to husbands and wives, uh, we typically believe are, are traditional roles for husbands and wives, those come from culture. They come from our tradition. They don't come from the Bible. And so it, it's possible for a Christian marriage to look very differently uh, from what our culture uh, says marriage ought to look like. Well, this same is even more true for questions about engagement and dating. The Bible says nothing about dating. <laughs> dating just it wasn't a thing in Bible days. Uh, and the Bible's an engagement in, in Bible days was very different from what we consider engagement to be. In our day and age, uh, doesn't make it right or wrong. I mean, the the way that first century Jewish culture viewed betrothal isn't necessarily you know normative or determinative for us. It was a cultural outworking in which people needed to behave according to the principles of the Bible. But um, that's you know within that cultural uh, um, environment. There were, they, they behaved by biblical principles. The culture wasn't biblical, but the principles were. Um, Joseph was a just man. He wanted to treat Mary fairly, kindly, actually, mercifully, when he believed that she had cheated on him. Um, he, so he resolved to divorce her quietly. Um, uh, Joseph, within the, the boundaries of the culture that he was in, within the cultural expression, he uh, was wanted to behave like a righteous person, behave like a godly, merciful person in the midst of that cult, those cultural structures. Well, the same is true for us with dating and engagement uh, and marriage, right? There are, there are some biblical principles, a lot of biblical principles about how we're to treat one another, we're to honor one another, we're to care for one another, we're to prefer one another one in love, we're to bear with one another. Those are all principles that are applicable in a dating relationship, in an engagement relationship, and in a marriage relationship. Um, they're applicable across cultures. Uh, whether your view of dating is, you know, two people going out to the movies, or whether your view of dating is, you know, going to a, a community barn raising, um, <laughs> or whether it's you know having a a conversation on uh, on um, Zoom, you know there's the cultural expression how it gets you know the 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 framework in which it gets lived out. Well, that's different 
across for different cultures. It's different from different eras. Um, but within it, the principles of how we're to treat one another, how we're to put God first, how we're to treat people as people and not as objects to be used, um, pe treat people with respect. These principles cross cultures. These principles are part of the biblical fabric. But the Bible doesn't actually tell us how to date. It just tells us how to how to treat our dates. The Bible doesn't tell us how to get engaged. It does tell us how to treat those with whom we are engaged. Uh, and uh, the Bible does tell us about how marriage works uh, in a lot of ways, but it doesn't tell us everything about how marriage works. And there are roles within marriage uh, and expectations within marriage that come with our culture, that come with uh, uh, what we saw our parents do or those around us do, that come with our own personal needs and expectations. And uh, we need to work those things out together uh, in, a, in a godly way. Uh, the Bible provides the framework for some of these things, but for not for others. But the Bible does provide principles for how we're to treat one another through all of these things. So Mary is betrothed to Joseph. That's not a relationship that we have in our day and age. We don't have that betrothed relationship in the United States in 2022. Um, but that doesn't mean the Bible has nothing to say about how we're to treat those to whom we're engaged. It doesn't mean the Bible doesn't have anything to say to those with whom we're dating. Um, the Bible has a lot to say about it. It just doesn't tell us what the it doesn't tell us what the structure should be, but it tells us how to behave within that structure. Make sense? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in our world, even today, there's different structures that are beautiful and and in which Christians can uh, behave in a godly manner in all sorts of different structures. Lord, I pray that you would help us to uh, listen to you and to your plans for how we're to treat other people. Help us to treat other people with dignity and respect, to treat other, each other with honor and love, uh, no matter what relationship uh, form we're in. God, I pray that you'd bless uh, everybody within the sound of my voice, encourage them and strengthen them. Uh, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.